the idea of 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 destroying black men is an interesting one. I, I, I heard your commentary that I thought was really interesting on The Breakfast Club. But one of the things that came up where I, I, I was a little struck was the conversation about Deshaun Watson. Um, uh, is it, um, if, and and, and the, uh, the sort of idea of a conspiracy. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, whether it's Deshaun Watson, whether it's Bill Cosby, I could even mention other names. I'm seeing all these accusations and almost no charges. And it concerns me, Dr. Hill, because it appears that America has gotten to a point in her viciousness towards destroying black masculinity. And I wanna be clear, there is an all out war on black masculinity that is, is as old as America is herself, but has intensified in recent decades. And that war on black masculinity seeks to make the black man a convicted felon before he has ever had an honest trial in court. And I'm seeing entire careers being destroyed based off of allegations where the new rationale says that if 10 women say it, it's true. Or if 20 women say it, it's true. Or if 30 women say it, it's true. But I thought you could only be convicted after a trial of your peers in a court. And that's not happening. We're seeing black what men about, get politically and socially lynched in media. But what, what about the word of women, right? I mean, if we have, for example, uh, 30 women or 50 women or however many, many women at this point we have with Bill Cosby, and they're all saying the same thing. Some know each other, some most don't. They're making these allegations. At what point do we say, hey, there's something to this because we actually trust women right and, and not just and not just all and not just uh, a, a single slice of women whether it's black women white women i'm saying women in general with the show not you have now dozens of i'm not saying no i know you're, I, I know you're not i know you're not saying no i know you're not saying it because they're women necessarily i'm saying though when these alleg i'm talking about the fact that these are allegations that are often levied against black men you're saying and these allegations mm -hmm. are levied by women i'm saying when women are making these allegations in a culture that often normalizes rape that has always historically normalized uh the abuse and harm to women's bodies uh that has been indifferent to rape and sexual violence what does it mean for us to say you know what even if dozens of them say it we shouldn't take it seriously we believe black men when they say the police harass them beat them shoot them we we were we were on Derek Chauvin's behind long before a trial we wanted George Zimmerman going long before he went to court because we said you know what black men's words mean something and black men's lives mean something I heard you say the same thing and I agree with you on Makaya Bryant right we have to value her life before we ever get to a courtroom but why is it when it comes to sexual violence against women it becomes a conspiracy against against the black man as opposed to the possibility that these black men have done harm whether it's to straight women queer women trans women whether it's to each other why can't that be a possibility particularly when it's coming from dozens i'll give you a chance to respond uh, as a matter of fact i don't want to cut you off so we're going to go to commercial and i'll give you the full time on the break to respond uh everybody we'll be right back uh with dr umar johnson Welcome back to Black News Tonight. We only have a few minutes left, so I want to jump right to Dr. Umar. I want to give you an opportunity to respond to that, and then I have a final question for you. Yes, sir. Good question. I would say that violence by the police and sexual violence are different in that in most of the police violence cases, Dr. Hill, we have witnesses, at least a half dozen in many cases, and in almost every case, there's been at least one, two, or three people who not only saw the entire encounter, between the police officer and their victim, but in many cases, it was captured on video. So it becomes indisputable. Officer Chauvin's assassination of George Floyd was caught on video. But by contrast, the accusations against Bill Cosby were not caught on video. The accusations against the Sean Watson were not caught on video. And then we also see a difference in the manner in which black men who are accused of sex crimes are treated in comparison to white men. Whatever happened to the case against the owner of the New England Patriots? Why didn't that get the same energy? Why didn't the case involving Ben Roethlisberger of the Pittsburgh Steelers, why didn't that get the same energy? What about the Duke lacrosse team of several years ago who sexually assaulted a young black female student? Why didn't that get the same energy? What about Marv, Marv Albert 
who was the leading NBA announcer at that time, accused of sexual abuse, yeah. and it didn't get the same energy. So all we're saying is sexual abuse is wrong. Black women suffer from it way more than white women do. As a black man understanding the history of the sexual objectification of the black woman in her and her body, I'm extremely sensitive to the issues of black women when it comes to sexual abuse and exploitation. But at the same time, I will not stand by and watch a black man get publicly lynched before he has had his day in court. Well, I, I guess it's, it's hard for me to uh, take that answer without asking a question, rhetorical question of well, what does freedom look like? I agree with you. White men get away with all kinds of stuff. They do all kinds of harm. White men have destroyed this world from the moment they've been on the planet. You and I will agree on that. But my vision of freedom is not to be as unchecked, as unaccountable, as violent, as patriarchal, as misogynistic, as transphobic, as imperialistic as white men are. I don't want uh, I don't want a world where I'm as, I'm free to be as reckless as Harvey Weinstein. I don't want Bill Cosby to be treated like Harvey Weinstein. I want Harvey Weinstein to be as accountable as Bill Cosby has been made to be. For me, that's what freedom and justice look like. And so I think too often, and this isn't a critique of you per se, but a critique of sort of how we talk about this issue is that sometimes we keep pointing to white men who haven't been held accountable and say, well, look, they didn't do anything when in fact we should be saying they need to be accountable, but we need to be accountable because so much of the harm that happens, whether it's sexual violence, whether it's transphobic violence, whether it's rape culture, we are accountable for that. Black men do harm in the world. Black men aren't the sole source of the harm. Black men didn't create the harm. Black men shouldn't be isolated for the harm. But black men do harm, and there has to be a way that we hold ourselves accountable. And I think if we don't, we run the risk of reinforcing patriarchy and, and so many other forms of violence in the world. Brother, we got to go, but you are welcome to come back whenever you want. We can finish the conversation. We can do mm -hmm. it on another venue as well, brother. But thank you, thank you for coming, and thank you for having a great thank dialogue you. with me.